Safety first. That's the approach taken by university administrators these days. On campuses across the country, safety first has been the rationale for silencing speech and firing professors. This practice has birthed a whole new moral framework, one that treats microaggressions as acts of violence. It is your job to create a place of comfort and home for the students. But when it comes to threats and calls for genocide against the Jews, it's a different story. Not safety first, but anything goes. Just look at the facts. Last year, Harvard told students in a mandatory training session that using the wrong pronouns for a person constitutes abuse. Sizeism and fat phobia, according to the session, are also attitudes that contribute to an environment that perpetuates violence. But when Harvard's president was asked by members of Congress this week in a hearing on campus anti-Semitism, if calling for the genocide of Jews constitutes bullying and harassment, here's what she said. It can be, depending on the context. In 2018, the University of Pennsylvania barred law professor Amy Wax from teaching freshmen after she said black students rarely finish in the top half of their graduating class. Penn has since been trying to sanction Wax for statements the law school says violate its anti-discrimination policies. But when Penn's president was asked if calls for genocide violate college rules, here's how she answered. If the speech turns into conduct, it can be harassment, yes. I am asking, specifically calling for the genocide of Jews, does that constitute bullying or harassment? If it is directed and severe or pervasive, it is harassment. So the answer is yes. It is a context-dependent decision. And when she was asked this... So is your testimony it, that it, you will not answer yes? This is what she said. If the speech becomes conduct, it can be harassment. Yes. Conduct meaning committing the act of genocide? The speech is not harassment? This is unacceptable, Ms. McGill. I'm going to give you one more opportunity for the world to see your answer. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's code of conduct when it comes to bullying and harassment? Yes or no? It can be harassment. In 2021, MIT canceled a major lecture about climate change by scientist Dorian Abbott because a group of graduate students disagreed with his belief that hiring should be based on a person's merit rather than their identity. If MIT won't tolerate unacceptable views, surely the college's president would shut down chants of long live the Antifada on our campus. Right? At MIT, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate MIT's code of conduct or rules regarding bullying and harassment, yes or no? If targeted at individuals not making public statements. Yes or no? Calling for the genocide of Jews does have, not constitute bullying and harassment? I have not heard calling for the genocide for Jews on our campus. But you've heard chants for intifada. I've heard chants, which can be anti-Semitic depending on the context, when calling for the elimination of the Jewish people. So those would not be according to the MIT's code of conduct or rules? That would be um, investigated of, uh, as harassment if pervasive and severe. But anti-Semitic speech on campus has already escalated into physical violence. Right. Students at these campuses have been assaulted, targeted, and harassed. Safety first. But when it comes to the Jews, it all depends on the context. I'm Maya Sulkin. This is The Free Press.